While the French were busy building, their building and creating and costuming their beautiful French bebés, the Germans were looking on, and in some extent they were trying to do copies of the French bebés, but somewhere along the line they said, hey, wait a minute, not all children are beautiful, not all children are perfect all the time. Children have character, they, they cry, they mope, they smile, they're mischievous. There's lots of other things we could do to create um, really realistic looking children. And a lot of the German doll makers began to experiment. And this would be about the beginning of the 1900s. And I wanted to show you that we have in the In All Ways Remarkable a collection, which once again features just wonderful dolls in all categories. We have really good examples of this. There's a great collection of great Kathy Cruz dolls, including their wonderful little Schlenker, Schlenkerchen um, baby with that little scrunched up smiling face. What a character face. And if you ever wanted to have one doll that you compared to a beautiful French bebé, look at this doll. Do you see what the difference is? There's character, there's, there's expression, there's a feeling of being a real child as opposed to just a beautiful work of art, which the French bebés absolutely were. Here's another wonderful example of the early Kathy Cruz uh, doll that is here. And we also will be showing, if you can, are lucky enough to come to the auction and to see it, you'll see the wonderful rare early ball jointed bebe and other great examples by Kathy Cruz. This is interesting to me. This costume is totally original. And I kept thinking, I swear we just sold this doll. And I went looking and I realized that we have had this model in this costume three different times over maybe the past eight years. But the fabric of the costume is always slightly different, just a small variation. The hat and sweater are always the same, and the style of the dress is completely the same, but there'll be slight fabric variations. And just not really anything of import, but just I found it fascinating. Um, one of the people that is credited with founding the whole German art doll movement is the Marion Collitz, who, who put together an exhibit of dolls in Munich in 1909 and then the following year in Berlin. And she was the one who brought out these dolls with their character expressions. And she made a big, you know, it was a major philosophical statement to be creating these character type dolls. Orders were placed by lots of the royalty and aristocracy in Germany who, for their children, um, various queens would order six of this and 10 of that to bring to their palaces for their children of these wonderful German dolls. And this is a really rare example because it has this carved hair or sculpted hair, which is very, very different than is usually found. They usually will have wigs. Look at our little Mr. Steiff. Look at these wonderful little dolls that the Steiff company made. Um, this is a very rare, small, small example of dolls by them. Um, and I, when I did this um, research on the American immigrant doll makers from Germany, I realized that Richard Steiff, one of the nephews of the original founder, Marguerite, had come to America and this was, and really founded the whole Steiff company in America and was instrumental in bringing over many, many pieces. And most of the pieces that the company designed during the time period of say 1910 to, in, to 20 were designed specifically for the American market with his influence because he now had become an American. So when we had these dolls being created, the German art doll movement, what happened but the German uh, Bisque doll company said, hey, let's not just keep making pretty dolls. Let's make some of those character dolls themselves. And here is a little group of them that are being presented in all ways remarkable. Uh, this one is from the, where my hand is, is from the Simon and Halbig company. This is their 151 model, very, very um, rare model. And I want to turn it around because Wow, when you can ever find a wig like this, this is just a dream for. It just shows what the dolls were like when they were originally sold. This is a type of soft, full, luscious wig they would have had. This would have been a very luxury doll with brown eyes. It's a wonderful example. Now, when they made their character dolls, they found out that they could make them either with painted eyes or glass eyes. And the same model would be made both ways. So lots of variation in getting the art characters. They were trying to find a niche where they could create these art character dolls, but still do it and make it a financially viable project for their company. The painted eyes, even though collectors really crave the painted eye models today, 
In fact, they ended up going to the glass eyes because that was what children wanted. And that's what parents bought for their children, dolls with sleeping eyes. So it's just little interesting backstories. This is the wonderful 112 model of uh, Cameron Reinhardt and made in the rare glass eyed version. And this, and I put this little girl down here so you could see the size. This is the Cameron Reinhardt 101. And that's the Cameron Reinhardt 107 boy with his wonderful costume. And then check this out. Look at the size of this girl. This is Gretchen, marketed as Gretchen. Um, it was the Cameron Reinhardt 114 model, and you just don't find it in this size. This is such a rarity to find. It's an absolutely wonderful treasure. I also have over here on the side for you just a couple other things to show you what the Germans were, were doing in their work. Thanks to uh, an American who had a great influence um, with the German firms, uh, George Borgfeldt, um, he got involved with many of the American artists of the time, the doll designer or the doll artists at the time, and he had their dolls made in Germany. Things like the Bilo, for example, that we all know so well. Things like Rose O'Neill's Cupie. And in this situation, we have this very rare Cupie, black complexion Cupie that was marketed as Hot and Top. And this was um, designed by Rose O'Neill and marketed in Germany made by um, companies in Germany for George Borgfeldt. We have another American artist, Grace Drayton, who designed this wonderful little doll after the popular painting illustration called September Morn, which depicted a little child kind of tentatively walking into frozen pond water and with this big wide-eyed look on their face, oh, it's too cold. And then for George Borgfeldt, this little doll was sculpted, and it's a very, very rare model called September Morn. And we have another guy that nobody knows who he is. Very, very rare model, um, only uh, sold by us one or tw once or twice in many, many years. Uh, we don't know who made them, who he was represented. He kind of looks like uh, Max from the Max and Maurice series, but there never has appeared a partner to him, so evidently not. And then finally, because of one of the most popular uh, venues was the googly market, uh, Cameron Reinhardt created their model known as the one, Model 131 googly. And here is a, another great example in a wonderful, wonderful size, big, beautiful, round googly eyes. And finally, I wanted to show you a German doll that most people are not aware of. And if you see, I see have her slouching in a chair I'm going to just make a little more room so she can slouch comfortably. This doll was presented by um, a German artist, Dora Petzold, in 1919. Dora Petzold, P-E-T-Z-O-L-D. And not so well known, um, but she wanted to create, well, I, I guess you could call her the first of the boudoir doll makers. And, you know, we think of other firms that made really great success in it, but Dora Petzold designed her doll, never designed for children, always designed as a play doll, and she would write in her advertisements, it was designed to sit on a chair and sort of slouch over and be like a fashionable lady. And see, that's what she's wearing, this very fashionable costume of the 20s, including her tall boots. And we're going to move from that into talking about other doll, uh, another famous maker of the 1920s and 30s, Madame Scabini, known as Lenchi, who made other dolls in wonderful, vibrant felt costumes like this. One of the wonderful things about a museum is that they tend to try to seek things that will be a different variety. Um, instead of having all of the dolls exactly the same, they'll try have dolls from different categories. And that's why this particular auction is just so full of different wonderful, wonderful treasures. I'm showing to you here a sample of some of the wonderful Lenchi dolls uh, that we have featured in the auction, and they are fabulous. We'll start with the little guy right in the front, whose name is Tom. You know it's Tom because it's embroidered on the front of his shirt. He has a little hobby horse. This must have been a particular favorite of Lenchi because she made Tom in several different sizes and with different facial models, this being the tiniest and this being the most rare and the most sought after. He has his little original 
cloth label by the side, and I'm going to turn him around so you can see him all the way around. Has his little painted hobby horse that he's riding, and he's absolutely wonderful in pristine condition. Um, two of the um, folklore, I call them the alpine type children, um, from the 300 series are included here. And this fellow, look at that hair. I just love those little golden ringlet curls that are coming around. He's absolutely great. And when he turns around, just keep checking all parts of his costume because he has the little tassel trim. He has the felt appliques. He just has wonderful, he has this brown Tyrolean type cap, but instead of having a feather, Lenchy saw fit to decorate it with a, f a felt feather and flowers. He's a wonderful guy. And then we have his little friend over here who's carrying a basket of felt flowers and more in his hand. I think those are Idlewise, but I'm not, I don't know. I don't know flowers. I wish I did, but I don't. And then we turn him around and you see his original paper label on the back telling you what model he is. And look at his little beanie cap. So many, when you look at Lenchies, you tend to see, you tend, their brightness grabs you and they're vibrant and they just have a great look. And it, you really should take one and you should kind of hold in your hand and study all parts of it. You say, who had the imagination to create all of these little details, like the, the blue and white woven socks like that and the silver buttons on the jacket. And then look at the scalloped cap. It is just absolutely extraordinary. Now this girl, I call her the petal girl because she has a hat that is absolutely wonderful. She is a very, very rare Lenchy model, the model 350. Very few examples of this are known to exist. And if any of you have Nancy Lazenby's wonderful book on Lenchy dolls, this particular doll is featured in that book in a full page color photograph in that book. Um, and it, it, this doll, not just the model, but the actual doll, Watch her hat when I turn her around. And you'll see why I call her the pedal hat. A very fashionable girl of the early 1930s, 19, late 20s, early 30s. They weren't content just to give her a cloche type of hat, but they made it, and I don't know, I could sit here and let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 tiers of petals, overlapping petals on her hat with a big florette bounce at the back. And then they repeat the scallops on her dress. Absolutely fabulous, fabulous doll. Another doll that was um, shown in a full page a photograph in Nancy Lazenby's book on Lynchy is this little, well, she's a little schoolgirl and she looks like she's headed off to school, but she's a little bit nervous about getting there. And I don't know if I'm gonna make it, but she'll do it, you'll make it, honey. She is their facial model 500, another very rare, rare model, and pristine, wonderful condition. And look at the detail of the coat. You can see it better when you get it all the way around the back. And look at the pieces, the, 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 the red and the burgundy, first of all, are pieced together, and then they're overridden with overlapping yellow and green felt stripes. So much work went into this. And even the lapel, if you turn up the collar, of the, you see that that pattern continues all the way around. She is wearing the more classic cloche hat, fits smugly to her head, and she's a wonderful schoolgirl. And then finally, what a rarity. This is an absolutely unbelievable treasure to have found, is this fellow, Sam, marketed as Sam by Lynchy, one of, the first, one of the few dolls that actually had a name from the early 1920s catalogs. Um, Sam is wearing a costume that is absolutely extraordinary. Not only felt appliques, but embroidery on the felt and then sequins to add to the trim. And we're gonna hold it up so we can get various details of it. Little wooden necklace, okay? Turban, brass bracelets, let me hold it so we can see it. Look at his embroidered shoes. Has his original paper label. I've only um, had Sam once before, and it was actually this Sam, which we sold about 10 years ago. This is the only other one that I've ever known to exist. A very, very fabulous style. 
vibrant, beautiful colors. And how could this have been preserved? All of this is almost 100 years old now. To have it preserved in this condition, um, it's been in the hands of a caring and really loving owner or multiple owners during all of that time.